Four U.S. educators end their Taiwan visit with a tour of the Zhiji Humanitarian Culture Center. Zhiji representatives shared Zhiji's environmental protection mission through an UNEA seminar. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. The four educators from Dallas, Texas, visited Zhiji's Humanitarian Culture Center. They've been deeply touched in seeing how Die TV spreads the stories of ordinary people making a difference in the world. They also vowed to carry out Zhiji's missions upon their return to the U.S. The guests from Dallas, Texas, have spent seven days in Taiwan. Zhiji's Humanitarian Culture Center is their last stop. This is the largest studio we have here. They began with a tour of the studios and were amazed. This visit has been planned by Zhiji volunteer Yuan Liangdin since two years ago. I hope they learn more in depth about our humanistic culture. A few days ago, we had a tour of the Recycling Education Center. As they gain a deeper understanding of Zhiji's four missions, it will enable them to do more when they return back to the U.S. Zhiji volunteers in the U.S. and these four educators have been actively promoting Zhiji's humanitarian culture and education mission. They're sharing pure stories about great people and what Suchi's doing and just regular people really makes a difference and we need more real stories like this so I'm just thank you and I'm impressed highly impressed with it. The first difference obviously is that I'm with my peers uh, fellow leaders that are leading these efforts uh, and we can make even more impact in regards to supporting the development of, of students uh, and ultimately uh, spreading the love uh, and the message of love and compassion uh, to others. Besides sharing the results. Experiencing what it feels like to be an anchor, Mr. Nakia Douglas still got a bit nervous. He has already visited Taiwan six years ago, but this second visit holds a greater meaning. He's more determined than ever in promoting Zhiji's humanitarian culture and education mission. Zhiji volunteers in Ladysmith, South Africa, have been helping students pursue an education by providing scholarships and building classrooms. Recently, Zhiji volunteers held a gratitude event at the Windsor High School. The guests who are attending Zhiji's gratitude event feel like they're returning back home. As the event is held at the Windsor High School, the students welcome the guests warmly. More than 40 scholarship recipients perform a sign language song, deeply touching those in the audience. We use this week, these two hours to remind ourselves about the master teachings, living healthy lifestyles, and learning more about this foundation. And explore more about this foundation. We are actively inspiring the school children with the master teachings. Tsuji has been helping the impoverished students at the school pursue an education. Therefore, the principal expresses uttermost gratitude. When I was reading about the Tsuji Foundation, the guiding principle is on charity. And the principle is to help the poor and to educate the rich. These children from the special needs school also performed a popular sign language song. The students from the school that Tsuji has helped build performed a sign language song, Love and Care for All. Many people took the opportunity to give what they can in order to help other less fortunate people. The scholarship recipients at the Windsor High School also raised funds with the bamboo coin banks. As people donate their change, the spirit of giving fills the air. Zhiji Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter recently held a camp, participated by more than 2,400 volunteers. Teachers from Taiwan were there to give lectures. Volunteers from six countries around the world came together through video conferencing to learn about the great love of Zhiji. <laughs> Over 2,400 volunteers gather at the Jinsu Hall in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. They seek to cultivate themselves and become deeply dedicated to Zhiji. On this day, the same lecture is held simultaneously at three different locations. Taiwan Zhiji volunteer Ding Ling Tsai tells everyone about turning from bad to good. Thank you. 
This part moved me the most because she turned her small love to great love and came here in person to share it with us. It tells us that the parents' love for their children never changes. We must spread these true stories and the importance of abiding by the precepts. I kept worrying that I missed this class. These teachers talk about the values that can enrich their lives through real assistance. It brings out the echoes from some students. I like to help people. Whenever there is somebody see, I see suffering, I like to go and help. Whatever I could do, I do it a little. I saw many people were very busy, but they were willing to give their time to help people. I feel that if everyone can give a little help, the whole world will become better. I feel very lucky that uh, I've seen a true master whose message for the world peace and helping and uh, compassion, learning compassion. And also I found it very interesting that I have to bring back to Nepal. I come here to learn many more things than I have to do in my country. So that's what I am here for, uh, to attend all the courses. <laughs> The students' learning to this spirit include the Belgian ambassador to Malaysia and some business people. I would say the, the, the benefit is, is to be part of it and to attend it and to have the privilege to be invited and to, to, to share some powerful uh, experiences uh, from people who has been uh, volunteering or has been benefiting of the support of uh, sushi. You know, there are Christian and Muslim who are in sushi. They remain with their religion, but they are all getting together. We all get together to help uh, do relief work and help charity and help other underprivileged and uh, uh, very poor and distressed people. This large group of people grants time to improve their wisdom life and walk the Bodhisattva path together. Students attending the city camp in Malaysia can focus on their cultivation because of 361 camp staff members working in the background. They prepare meals, tea and snacks for the students. The kitchen at the Jinsu Hall is busy with noise in the early morning because cooking volunteers have to prepare lunch and snacks for over 2,000 people. <music> They work together and they treat their work as another way of learning. I learned to cooperate with other people after my second mission, how to work with so many volunteers. I also give myself a challenge, which is I must know how to do the work right by cooperating with other people. Everything has its challenges, but just by following Master's words, keep a bored mind and pure thoughts and just do it, they are able to solve many problems. When you deal with any sudden change in the camp, your attitude should become better. In the past, you might become nervous when you were faced with an unexpected change, but now you're calmer. I feel fortunate to be part of the daily routine of this team. They start early and work until very late. I've worked in that team before, but back then I felt it was very tough. It crossed my mind that if the work was left to senior volunteers, it would be very hard on them. But I am still young, so I can do it. One day before the camp, these volunteers had been preparing everything from pasting mark on the grounds to going through the rundown. So the students of the camp are able to focus on their classes. We must do our best because we know what our goal is and what method we should do to improve our culture. Doing a different type of work is also a cultivation. These volunteers use technology so they can also listen to the talks while they are doing their work outside the classroom. 
In February of this year, heavy rains had led to floods in the northwest regions of Ecuador. City volunteers have headed to La Union to assess the damages and distributed cash cards to a total of 150 affected households. The disaster relief work has been carried out by local volunteers. Por más pobres que seamos, podemos siempre hacer algo por el prójimo. Half a month ago, La Union, located in the northwest region of Ecuador, had been flooded. The affected residents have all suffered in different ways. My husband runs a bakery. The flood has damaged the machines and various ingredients in the shop. There's little food left at home as well. The crops, including corn, rice, and cocoa, have all been destroyed in the flood. A small house has also been washed away. 65 Ecuador volunteers from five cities have headed over to give the affected households the much-needed help. I really appreciate Siji for helping us. My wife and I were very touched when the volunteers came to our home to tell us that they wanted to help us. Siji is the first organization that has come to help us. I really appreciate these volunteers. I also hope there won't be another flood. Not only are we representing the Siji Foundation, but we also want to help those in need with the guiding principles and spirit of Dharma Master Zen Yin. Despite being far away from Taiwan, the distribution event was held entirely with the Siji style. The local volunteers have brought love and hope to all the flood-affected residents. At the 4th UN Environmental Assembly, city representatives held a seminar titled Turning Trashes into Treasures. They share with attendees city's environmental protection mission. In recent years, plastic waste has become one of the biggest problems with which our species have to reckon with, especially when it comes to our oceans. We have an estimation of uh, approximately 8 million tons uh, per year going into the, our ocean. To put it in perspective, it's like 168 Titanic's worth of weight in waste, and it's still increasing at an alarming rate. If we continue like that, by 2050, we will have more plastic in the ocean than fish. We have to do something. Governments have to do something. Around the campus at UNEA4, some organizations are proposing potential solutions to the problem. One of them is Tsu Chi, with its initiative Turning Trashes into Treasures, which tackles the problem from different perspectives. One of them, fundamental, is community engagement. In the beginning, when we start to communicate with them about the climate change, they will answer me, I'm more worried about what's going on for my tomorrow, for my next week. The NGO faced quite a few challenges in order to implement recycling in Mozambique, where illiteracy and low income are more impellent problems to the population. This required an approach that couldn't be limited to presenting the problem. It had to be tackled with action, with people, on the ground. It really was a step-by-step -step approach. We physically took them to go pick up all the garbage that was around. It was through that process that they discovered, wow, we really do produce this much waste. Thanks to this long and involved effort on the ground, Tsuchi, despite the initial difficulties, finally got to recruit 3,000 people 
to roll up their sleeves and clean their streets and lands. But in order to successfully involve a whole community, Mrs. Tai reveals, you need one more very important element. I think what motivates them to do this work all by themselves is the power from the heart, because they have felt the genuine love and care from the Sichi family. And when they know that we truly love them for them, they will start to learn to love themselves as well. When you love yourself, you must purify your heart and mind and keep your surrounding environments clean as well. Another perspective with which Tzu Chi is facing the problem is technology. The audience got to see products obtained from used plastics such as hats, sunglasses, clothes, and even building materials. This is the paper waste ready for recycling. There are so many, many plastic um, with a mixture of paper. Like for example, our business card, there's a glossy covering outside uh, that's plastic. Because one of our uh, core values is to um, make good use of this waste uh, into uh, environmental uh, products. So I'm very, very happy to present today that uh, this interlocking pavement made from 100% uh, plastic. These products are currently in use by Tsuchi for operation of reliefs in case of catastrophe and humanitarian work. There's a lot of people creating innovations here at this assembly, and a lot of them are saying, oh, like being environmentally friendly can also create profits. There can be a financial incentive. And what I got from the panel is that your incentive is love and compassion, not profit. The fact that you could see a blanket, you feel it, thinking it's cotton, made of cotton and it is made of these PET bottles, that is awesome and amazing. I want to bring the technology to my country. Especially in Kenya, it is going to help a lot. And that's why we try to advise the president, because that one also is going to create a lot of jobs for the young people. Mobilization, know-how, and most of all, love. These are the coordinates to follow if you want a future in which plastic makes our clothes, our table, even our houses, and not our oceans. In 1999, Dama Master Zheng Ying was entrusted by then Hongde Hospital Superintendent to take over the hospital. That same year, at the original site, the Yuli Tsuji Hospital was established. It has been 20 years since the humble beginnings of the small remote area hospital. Now still small in size, but the hospital offers high quality services. At 6 o'clock in the morning, the day is still not fully lit yet. However, the only early morning clinic in all of Taiwan has already opened its doors. For the Yuli Tsuji Hospital, this is a normal routine. Dr. Zhang Yuling, who has been serving Yuli for 20 years already, still works as motivated as ever. Just like the first day he got on the job, looking back, he's filled with emotions. In the old hospital building, due to limited space and a shortage of doctors, the consultations that took place wasn't ideal. So at that time, the most important thing was how to improve the quality of care from our medical staff, especially when it came to the concepts of emergency medical care. In 1999, Tsuji officially took over the Yuli Hongde Hospital and established it as the Yuli Tsuji Hospital. Now 20 years later, the Yuli Tsuji Hospital has become one of the most important emergency medical institutions serving the southern part of Hualien. Each doctor serves multiple roles, even for senior doctors like Yang Xingliang is without exception. Being stationed here means we must do our very best and give our time to serve the patient. Coming here, we must provide the highest quality of care. Starting from 2001, Yuli Tsuji Hospital started to expand its services for the community. The medical team started to conduct medical home visits. When Dr. Zhang Yuling witnessed the sufferings of the elderly population, he had already envisioned to set up a community long-term care station in order to safeguard the health of the local seniors. When people get older, it means that, naturally, they will need more and more medical resources. So when a specific area is limited in its medical resources, how do we go about to prevent illnesses? The answer lies in preventative care and public health promotion. Dr. Zhang Yuling will always pinpoint the needs of the patients and then provide the most appropriate treatment that is available. In 2018, he retired his position as the hospital superintendent and passed the baton over to Dr. Chen Yanbi, who, similar to him, has dedicated herself for a decade's time at the hospital. Even though the title is no longer there, but the patient center model and spirit will always live on in practice. Whenever I'm done examining a patient, I will always remind myself that you cannot just casually tell the patient that they're fine. 
There are many hidden parts to medicine, so I always leave about 30 to 40 percent of exploratory space, asking myself, what more can I do? In addition, what other recommendations can I make to the patient? Growing up in Myanmar, where there's a lack of medical resources, Dr. Chen Yanbi has witnessed firsthand the sufferings of individuals from her homeland. She willingly volunteered to come surfing early. However, at first she struggled due to not knowing anyone. Fortunately, thanks to the medical staff who has persisted in accompanying her through the thick and thin for the past 20 years. For the residents of the Southern District, we're capable in providing high quality medical services. However, the most important thing is the sense of responsibility and mission that the medical personnel adhere to. It's their goal to continuously safeguard the health of the locals. Yuli is filled with beautiful landscapes. In recent years, with the development of the tourism industry, it has attracted more and more foreigners to the area. For example, Deputy Superintendent Lin Ziyan, who was originally struck by Yuli's stunning scenery, has spent more than half of his 40-year-old life here. We often meet patients who are not locals. One time, there was a grandpa coming from Chambing Township. I had asked him, coming from this far away. He told me that it wasn't far at all, that by car, it's only a 40-minute drive. That's much closer than going to Taidong, which is a two-hour drive. Serving as the first line of defense hospital for the remote areas, we have a very important role to upkeep. Yuli City Hospital, although small in size, in no way is it lacking in any shape or form. The medical staff members here are all highly trained professionals in their specific fields. In addition to being able to perform complicated surgical procedures, they also play major roles in disaster relief-free clinic missions. For some patients, they do not have a primary caregiver. Whether it is a family member or a friend, they still need someone, especially for the patients that need to be rolled over and suction every two hours. The medical personnel taking on their case can be very tiring. However, whenever we see them recover and then be discharged, it makes us feel very happy for them. It's been 20 years since the Yuli Siji Hospital was established. The number of outpatient visits has exceeded 1.9 million. At present, not only are there plenty of experienced senior doctors, but there are also a fresh group of young doctors that are motivated to show their more responsibilities. For the next 20 years to come, they will surely continue to safeguard the health of the local population. Chenzhou City volunteers in China started helping a young man with cerebral palsy eight years ago. He's bedridden and unable to talk or take care of himself. City volunteers come once a week to bathe him. On March 29, 2011, Chenzhou Cixi volunteers met Yang Zhenzhi for the first time. Since then, they have been coming every week to bathe him. We bring our bucket over there to bathe him, wash his hair and face. When his hair is too long, we'll cut it for him. Two male volunteers add some enzyme and adjust the temperature of water. Then they wash his hair, clean his face and body. 26-year-old Yang Zhenzhi suffers from cerebral palsy since he was young. His father has passed away, so he regards the volunteers as his family. We treat him like our own son. If my son relieves himself, we will bathe him too. It's the same, I don't mind. Female volunteers wash his clothes and comfort her. They have been doing it for eight years, and they will continue loving him as always. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Yuli Ciji Hospital, a volleyball match has been held. The staff from Huadian Ciji Medical Center, Guanshan Ciji Hospital, and Yuli Ciji Hospital have participated in the match. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.